Delighted now to be joined by Galway Hurling chairperson Claude Gagan on the line to look back on the two intermediate uh, hurling championship semi finals, which saw Climber and Melik Aircourt advance and now advance into the intermediate hurling final. Claude, is, is there a bit of relief, or maybe relief isn't the right word, but like seeing an intermediate final? Because I suppose. It has even with the senior the the five group games they they do take quite a while to complete you could say and everything and I suppose yeah. with the intermediate uh taking shape now two teams left and two teams are probably highly fancied from the start of the year to be there. Yeah, if that's true, Paul. What's going on if you were to pick out two teams and start to start the yes, a lot of people, a lot of people might have given you a course in Kilimer, like in fairness, you know, um. I've seen a number of places mentioned, a number of people mentioned it, like their form book over the last few years and in intermediate both those teams has been incredibly high. And obviously, like, you know, you take Climbers instance last year, like, you know, incredibly unlucky not to win last year's final. So um, they've bounced back really well from that, you know, look like a team very determined and obviously Airport um, put up a very good performance yesterday as well. Yeah, and even, I suppose, if, if you look at it overall from... Uh, climber perspective it, you, it's nearly everyone talking about last year already and I, I'm, I'm sure it's been referenced like when you consider they were so close to my column and like they, they can probably take a lot of confidence then when they see what my column have went on and done yeah absolutely and like in fair my column have had a great year themselves obviously as you rightly point out and like even if you look back at the form book of the last few years, the intermediate winners, like obviously Oren Moore went on, won the intermediate All Ireland, but the following year got up out of senior B into senior A as well. Uh, Kick and Iron, very similar, playing senior A hurling. Uh, when they got up, went straight up out of senior B into senior A as well. So there's no reason the, that the winner of this game, which the team, it could be, wouldn't have ambitions, let's say, to go on and win the senior B championship as it will be next year and trying to push on to the senior championship after that, you know. Overall, how do you think the two semi-finals went in uh, Kenny Park over the weekend? Yeah, like I suppose they probably went to form lines. I suppose like Cylon have had an incredibly good year. Like, like of course they're not going to be happy they got to semi-final and got beaten. No team will be, but like it's incremental progress from them um, to get to a semi-final. Big occasion, obviously a big double header in Kenny Park. Um, probably left themselves a bit too much to do. Uh, the goal just a few minutes before half time was a killer for Cylon. Um, in that it just gave that climber that little bit of a buffer, I felt, and they probably, you know, had a huge confidence going in to half time off that. Um, the second game, I suppose, I was a bit closer, um, a bit more tension filled. Um, air courts probably just always looked maybe they had that few points extra on them, but like. Rahun were very dangerous. And like I know the last time I was talking to you, we, took, we spoke about William Mackey in the edge of the square for Rahun. Some performer, an unbelievable performance again yesterday. Like, you know, awful handful. If we're to start with the Cylon Kleiner game to look at, you really felt if Cylon were to cause a shock here, which you could say to the intermediate favourites uh, to win this competition out, it was a good start they needed. And that's something really. Climber did let them do straight away into three points to no score lead. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, even coming up before the climber goal, before half time, um, Jake Hogan had made a few really good stops. He'd made one outstanding stop uh, prior to that. So they had been coming under pressure. Climber had been, I suppose, looking for that killer punch, um, maybe to, I suppose, take the confidence away from Cylon and push themselves on and. Yeah, you rightly point out they probably could have done with a faster start, but Climber, I suppose, probably showed their bit of experience too. And you know, the experience of being semi final day in the final over the last number of years, like you know, probably sorted them. Yeah, the three points to no score. Then Cylon bring it back to 6 5. Uh, some great scores from Keelan Craven, but yeah. I think it was 1 4 then Climber uh, scored. You pointed out there about, I suppose, Jake Hogan made some. Excellent saves, but probably which was really impressive, the work rate of the climber forwards to then overturn Jake yeah. Hogan and punish that mistake. Yeah, and I fell from because he was having an outstanding game, but like you rightly credit the climber forwards, like 
climber or a team that are in um, serious shape. They're big, big men, but they're in they're in top physical condition too. And they were hunting in packs, as you say, and very much putting the pressure on. Would you say with this climber team that is just like if you look at some teams, you look at, at Kinvera, they obviously have Connor Whelan. Like some teams do have this outstanding forward, but it just feels like with this climber team, it's it's a well balanced team all around. Yeah, I think that's a fair comment. Like, and they, listen, they do have some stars, obviously. You know, like Kevin Haney's been very, it's performed very well for them the last number of years. And obviously, Andrew Carey, when he came back in the last number of years, a big man and obviously has that intercounty experience from pre- uh, previous time. But they do have they do have a nice balance, as you say. They've there's no weak link in the climber team. And with that, one ten to six, I think at half time, never never like just kept that scoreboard ticking all the time never really let Cylon back into it even Ryan King gets the goal you're thinking could Cylon be on here for a comeback but just straight away Climber responded with another goal yeah and again I suppose that's the experience of the last number of years coming standing to them not panicking in a situation um now probably this goal for Cylon when they got it probably came a little bit too late for them to be able to push on from but um as you rightly point out Climber didn't panic in that scenario um, you know, we keep referencing the last number of years, but like it definitely does stand to you. Those players have been in that, had experienced that occasion, knew how to see it out, and like effectively did. Do you think it's being referenced all the time for them last year? I, I, I don't know. Like, it's hard to know the psychology of a team, what way to look at it. Like, uh, some people might use it as a driving force. Listen, subconsciously, even if they're not talking about it openly, I'm sure it is. Um, like whether the whether the team want to hang everything on a moment in time from last year, I don't know. Like only only the climber players could tell you that. I suspect they wouldn't <laughs> um, until until the year is over. Anyway, I'm sure. Uh, are they all done now in the final, or is this just? Do, do you think we have an epic intermediate final here? Like because even if you look at it, like Milik Airport have been favourites a lot of years but maybe a flatter to deceive they probably admit in in previous years but like it, it feels like it's set up for a nice final year like people were maybe talking about we wouldn't have a final with two South Gold Hurling teams now we do two real traditional Hurling teams who want to be in senior Hurling yeah I, I, I'd be honest with you I, I don't see it as um as a cakewalk for any team I, I this is this is going to be a massive encounter. I think it's one, like even after the games um, yesterday, just talking to a few climber lads and a few aircraft lads, the, the banter had already started immediately after the game. And obviously like the two clubs have linked up at some underage grades uh, with Father Joe Watches. So like there's a massive familiarity with each other and actually a brilliant, um, a brilliant working relationship between the two clubs. When it comes to Father Joe Watches, they've been a great success actually. So it's you know there's definitely an extra spice in the dimension to it. Um, it's it's a, it's a massive derby up there. Derby is very hard to call. Like Climber, in fairness, probably will carry the favourites tag and you know, deservedly so. But Aircourt have so much talent themselves, and as you rightly point out, have been you know have been expected probably over the last number of years to go, perhaps go on and win it. Even going back to win or more won it or more or an outstanding team intermediate team. I actually remember Aircourt playing them in the group that year and drawn with them. Like Aircourt for for the last probably five or six years now had been the business end and just waiting to make that breakthrough. So like not to sit in the fence, no result in that final would surprise me. Did anyone for you stand out in these intermediate semi-finals that you feel even the guy senior management might be keeping an eye on? Oh, I'd say several, I'd say several players like I know that members of management were there and obviously it was streamed as well. So I know that the members of management who couldn't be there uh, have watched the games back already. Like, without a doubt, like Galway, I think in fairness, over going back to years and years actually, have always had a pretty strong presence from um, intermediate teams in the panel. Like, uh, I'm just going back to, let's say, from 2012 onwards, 2015 onwards, let's say, um, with the Hasper, the, when Hasper were intermediate, the two Manions were there, and Niall Burke, obviously, Garrosh, they were intermediate for quite some time when uh, they were playing intra county. So I, I don't I don't think being intra county certainly preclude anybody, and I'd say a few of them are definitely, definitely putting their hands up. 
And who could you see going in? <laughs> That's a matter for management now. I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't be telling Henry Jeffin what to do. Uh, he's certainly a better judge of the game than I'll ever be. So, But I'd be surprised like if a few of them don't get a look, yeah? Just on Cylon, because it, it feels wrong not to talk about them here. It, it, it was a heavy defeat, and they, they probably will look back on this as a, as a huge learning curve for the group. But, like, if you're to look at what they went through, like, lost the relegation final, I think, uh, to Kilbaker. They didn't go down that year. And since then, they've got to a quarterfinal and a semi final. There's been. There's been progress every year, and uh, like you have to hand it to them because, like, they're they are up against a lot of things in that area of Galway. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a non traditional hurling area, as we all well, as we well know. But and um, like the club has made instrumental strides, as you said, on the field but off the field as well. Like Cylon's a fantastic facility to go to, and they're constantly seeking to improve it. You know, they've they've certainly made. Um, fantastic facility not just for their hurling team there but for their community with their walk and all the rest of it and um, you know they it, it, it's like it obviously will be a big learning curve for them um like they had a massive support in Athenry yesterday and um, you know there was a lot of people who are to be in Kenny Park sometimes for uh, football games let's say but there was definitely you know people who wouldn't ordinarily be at hurling matches let's say who came to support what would be the local hurling team side on and seen a lot of different uh, GA crests there that would tie in with Cylon, let's say. So it was great to see that the community around the area really got behind them. I even noticed even on social media, like there was there was a big buzz around Cylon about it. And, and like, I'm sure, listen, I'm sure they'll want to build it and be back again. And listen, I've no doubt that they can be. And even with them, I was it an under 17B they did win a, a year or two ago. A lot of them players to come through, even one or two from the Colossal Bally Clore team, like they, like they are, they are producing it at underage, playing at high levels. So like yeah. it's it's definitely only promising down there. Absolutely, yeah. Like it's it, this isn't this isn't a one team wonder in terms of there's just this team and there's nothing coming in behind it. As you rightly say, there's the work is being put in at underage level too. Like and you know like. It has its difficulties, obviously, with, um, you know, f- for most people in the area, football will be the number one game. But, you know, I suppose the fact that they're picking out of a few places as well helps. And, like, days like yesterday will help, obviously, grow interest as well. And, hope, like, obviously, they didn't go the way they wanted, but a big occasion. And no doubt, like, that they look to back it up and get, get further support from their community. On the other game... Um... Mila Care Court 117, Rahu Newcastle 112. It feels like Mila Care Court are coming right at the right time. Um, even in their group, they weren't overly impressive. Uh, through a game with Karen Moore, weren't overly impressive against Abby, got the job done yesterday. Never really looked in doubt at too many stages and with the introduction now of John Fleming back from injury it really feels like they're just coming right yeah I think you've hit the nail in the head there they seem to be timing their run very well um, obviously John Fleming coming on for the half hour the last day and playing the game yesterday is obviously a massive addition to any team that can bring in an inter-county forward like to your set up after winning your previous three games or drawing one and winning their other two games like that's a massive addition and obviously you know massive confidence boost everyone around them but like they do seem to be uh they do seem to have timed the run very well and i don't doubt damien and his background team will certainly have them ready to go in two weeks you know yeah with that yesterday what did you make of their performance overall yeah, I'm sure Damien and the likes will, will, there's plenty they'll pick out, like, you know, that they'll want to work on. But uh, arm's length is probably too strong a way of putting it that they had around that. But at the, at the same stage, time, they were always ahead throughout the game. Um, and uh, much like with Climber, when you mentioned when Silent got the goal, uh, Air, Mila Gerecourt always seemed to be able to respond to when um, Rahun got, Rahun Newcastle got key points or key scores, like it was a good sign of Aircourt that they were able to go down and get their own score. Um, probably in what you call the championship minutes, let's say before and after half time, just got that little bit of a buffer as well, you know? Yeah, even, it was, it was a slender enough lead, you could say at halftime, only the two points in it, but still in that 
second half, there there was never too much doubt, really. Yeah, like there, there wasn't in some ways in saying that. Like I know I, I mentioned Willie already. Like like he was causing absolute hey, uh, havoc. You know he's um like but that you know Willie Mack is a difficult man to deal with. Um and you know Aircourt managed it pretty well. Um I know they did concede a penalty to him uh, after the after the resumption of play. Um but you know it was. They, they managed that part of the game pretty well considering the threat that it was. Um, just maybe, again, I suppose, a bit like we mentioned with Climber, they probably just had that bit more balance to them, you know? And Willie Mackey, it's, you, you could say an old school forward, but it's it's still great, I suppose, with the way the game is on that we can still see an old school forward like that. Absolutely. Like, and I, actually... It's you know now you mentioned I've seen a number of uh, performances this week where teams like I suppose because the weather conditions on the Saturday in particular they went route one and like hurling can be a simple enough game at times like we all talk about tactics and everything else but we can overcomplicate it at times if you have a big man at the edge of the square who's able to win the ball you know there's there's nothing wrong with that tactic you know like score might come off it a penalty a free um. You know, he was uh, he put in a he put in a massive shift for uh, Rahul Newcastle, a huge shift. Do you see anything different in Mila Aircourt this year? Like we we talked about them maybe coming up short, but this year now is, is there anything different standing out for you? Maybe it's just that resilience, you know, um, um, mental fortitude built up over the last few years. Like the the Karen Moore game, I think yeah, you mentioned it there. They drew that game. They were well down in that game, you know, um, and came back to to get the draw, um, you know, fought fought back to it, like which is a good good sign of the team, you know. Um, despite the fact they were in a good position in the group, regardless after winning their first game, um, so like maybe it's just that kind of mental fortitude, as I say, has been has been really built up by them. And I suppose this, I don't know what what the training regime for Millie Garcourt has been, but. As you right, uh, pointed out, they do seem to be coming to boil and point at the right time. And like uh, as you pointed out, um, it's it's set up now for a real good final. And like mm-hmm. even looking at it from both sets of forwards line, like on the Milik Airport, you have Nathan Erner, John Fleming, other side Owen McAvoy, uh, Jason Broderick, Jack O'Mara. Like it's 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 really set up for a game. You could say that could nearly be. Similar to last year's intermediate final, going right down to the wire. Oh yeah, it's like obviously every game takes a life of its own, but like I, I think this could be a, could be an epic, like the two probably the two best teams in intermediate this year, as we said. But the fact that they're rivals and cooperating rivals at underage, but that it's going to be some spice to the fair. Like I'd say, I'd say the fun now up around Climber and Clanfort, uh, the next. The name and air court the next few weeks are going to be oh, going to be something else. And the intermediate final then it's set for Sunday week, is it? Uh, it's not set yet. Uh, okay. it's, yeah, it, it will be in, it will be in two weeks' time. Um, so with the uh, uh, the day and uh, venue aren't set yet, but it will be in two weeks' time. Yeah. Even just to touch on um, the intermediate relegation, it. It did get feisty between um, Kilbegenty and Casagher over the weekend. Yeah, so I heard. No, I, I wasn't at it because I was in Athenry. But um, yeah, I, I heard. I heard at the end there was a little bit. But I, I hopefully, hopefully everything's all right. But um, yeah, I, as I say, I wasn't at that game. I just got a report that you know uh, Kilbegenty had won by the three points that they had been well up, and that Casagher had made a, a fairly a big charge towards the end and actually got it back to two points at one stage. I think so. Like invariably, these things, you know, the tension definitely mounts. Like, you know, it's a, it's a big day, it's a massive pressure filled day for both those clubs. Like, and obviously, you know, nobody nobody wants to lose their status. So, it's, I suppose tensions are always going to be a little high, you know. Feels like it's really significant for Killer Vacancy, like a, a small pocket, you could say, of Go Hurling, but like plenty of games have been there in Kill Vacancy this year. and yeah. Like just massive for them to secure their status. Ah, uh, huge, yeah. Like you know, they they were off the road for me at home here, and like it's it's a club that has um, have you right as rightly said, uh, they've actually staged a good, quite a few games this year, which they've um they've invested a huge amount of the facility. They're 
they've put in a fantastic facility, you know, a brilliant facility to go to. Um, and like it was huge, huge for them to secure the status again. I know they've been on the on the bubble of it the last few years. Um, you know, they're being a club that have been massively hit by immigration, hugely hit you know, the young men who be on the teams. Um, so like it's it's a massive weight off their shoulders, I'm sure it is, yeah. Even just the teams that could come up to um intermediate, like it's it's set up massively. I was only talking on the podcast last week with David Connors, and we talked about the potential of Ballygare playing Scan and Montbellu. That's what's happened with both of them winning their semi-finals over the weekend. Um I presume as the Hurling chairperson, like we, we all like to see local derbies. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Listen, I you know, I was saying it on Twitter last night, like our intermediate uh, final and our junior A final, like you like in some ways you couldn't script them. Um, you know, the junior A, like you're going to have a new winner, you're going to have a new team in intermediate next year. I know Ballygar have been there in the past, like, but not for quite some time. So, like either Ballygar or Skahanam or Belly Malak are going to be playing intermediate hurling next year, which for both those clubs is huge. Um, and like both those clubs, like obviously have played, they have quite familiarity with each other. They're in the one group, let's say, in the in the group stages. I and mean, like both those clubs have provided a huge amount of talent to Galway underage the last number of years. Like obviously, you know, Sean McDonald that was on um from in more lately, but Ballet have supplied a huge amount of hurdles to Galway underage hurling uh, between academy squads and over 17 and to 20 the last number of years. So there are two um non-traditional outposts you could say but like I know Ballygar the last 20 years have been a massive success hurling wise and the uh, amalgamation of Scahan and Billy Malak has, has really pushed hurling on that area as well so like for me coming into the job this year like seeing the growth of her in those two areas it's, it's it's brilliant it's great it's great to see like and hopefully they'll get big crowds behind them as well and uh, it's a novel novel pair in, in the final and you know no doubt whoever wins it will be really looking forward to testing themselves in the community next year and I'd say won't have any fear of it. Is it just something I suppose when you're when you're a hurling chairperson, it's it's nearly one of your aims, I presume, that you want to see, I suppose, hurling grow in, in these areas maybe that aren't traditional like and it's Across the board this year, even teams that didn't get out of their group and intermediate, we've seen maybe Cylon and Ryan and Newcastle, not what you could say, strong hurling uh, pockets like in, in the last few decades. But like if you look overall, we look at the junior, the junior one, the teams like it, it must just be fantastic for you to see hurling growing in them areas. Yeah, it's great. Like, and it's a credit to the clubs and the personnel involved in the clubs. Like they're the ones doing the work, you know, like. Um, it's great from our point of view to see be able to put these t- uh, teams into new grades and everything else. But it's a testament to the work that they have done, obviously, with the other teams that they have here, here now, but obviously a testament to the work that they've done over the past 10 or 15 years at underage. It just doesn't happen all of a sudden. Um, like, and it, listen, it's it's fantastic. It's fantastic for growing the game. It's fantastic from a Galway Harlem point of view, even Galway management of underage teams, academy teams. Uh, senior adult teams like you're growing the pool like um i remember one of jeffrey linsky's minor teams a number of years ago like if you looked at the team sheet um what would be considered non-traditional hurling teams like there was loads of um teams represented in that it was great to see because it showed that the game had grown and that that talent has been recognized which is you know but again that's testament to the clubs for the work they've put in um to get those players up to that standard and just finally, before we do finish up, Claude, um, one game remaining in the Intermediate Championship, as we've outlined, Climber to play Mielic Air Court, uh, daytime and venue to be confirmed. But overall, are you happy with the way the Intermediate Championship has went this year? Yeah, like brilliant. Listen, um, it's given people like the Intermediate Championship has been played like this a number of years now, but it's probably given people who maybe... Um, We'll be looking to see what the senior championship structure look like. It'll be akin to what the intermediate was. It mightn't be the exact same, but it'll be that kind of idea. Um, yeah, it's listen, I've been very happy with it overall. You've great certainty when games are on, you play every two weeks. It's fairly cutthroat to get out of the get out of the group, like every game matters. Um, and like ultimately, I think it's fair to say the cream has uh, right risen to the top, like so, like from Listen, from a uh, Galway Hurling point of view, in terms of administration wise, yeah, been delighted with how it's gone. Um, just a massive thanks to the clubs for 
I suppose getting on with things and you know having 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 things right and being ready to go and providing really good entertainment. Like I even um I was to, uh, touch base with the PRO Michelle Healy uh, today and the streaming numbers for uh, the intermediate final were excellent as well. So like it just shows you the product that is in Galway and that people are keen to see their product. Absolutely and a massive final as we've said to look forward to between um climber and Melik Aircourt. Um, that's all on our intermediate show looking back at the semi-finals we will be back later in the week with a preview of the senior playoffs and looking back on some of the action to see who's out of the championship and who will be advancing the preliminary quarterfinals and quarterfinals uh, Claude Gagan thanks a million for your time no problem Paul thanks very much